Tess was whatever a normal child was until she was two and a half. Her red book was signed off and then two weeks later we were in hospital with her having grand mal seizures and we were there for six months while they were trying to control the seizures and they never really did control the seizures um, and so we were thrown into a world that we knew nothing about. We're parents of extraordinary children. What we do is be uh, you know, above and beyond what ordinary parenting would be. The services on the whole try to make you feel grateful for every little thing you've got. Oh, rather than them realising that, you know, in the end, if you can't cope, the child will be in foster care and that would cost them mm. 50 times more than what they're currently paying. People will just look at you and look like that. <laughs> and that's it. There is no school. I know, it's so difficult for you. With my son, he's able to walk and stuff. He's more mm. abled. If he leaves the house, I then have to go looking for him. Yeah, because you don't know. So, mm. you know, I've got two younger siblings indoors. They have, a, you know, if they're kicking up steam, I'm not leaving the house. It's raining, it's mm. cold, I'm not going. I have to work out a way of, say, waiting for their dad to come in from work so I then can go out in the car and look for Aaron mm. because I don't know what's happening with him. We'll be doing this for the whole of our lives and we've got three 91 year old mums that are still caring for their sons at home. It doesn't stop, they don't grow up, change what they're doing, move on, you know they're never going to be um, fully out there. Like, you know Catherine says her oldest son is living with his girlfriend, he's got, you know, life come and meets her but I will always have to be in the background. If Aaron has his own life and gets married and has children, um, I will still have to be there. He will always need us there. And once I'm gone, it'll probably be down to his siblings mm. to always be there because he'll never function fully on his own. thing through all of this organisation, as I said earlier, are the, the children and young people. The young people who come here, the most important thing is that their aspirations, all of the nice buzzwords, are actually fulfilled. So that will mean that their communication skills are developed. Every single young person that comes in here has an individual plan based on what they like to do, what could make them blossom as an individual. And on, on stuff that they need to work on, whether it's being healthy and strong and fit and happy, then that's what people work on. Their lives are completely filled with good stuff, but it's based around what our staff and what parents see and what young people see together for each of the individuals. And that's proper personal centre planning. Parent forums are vital because they keep people together, parents share the expertise, they learn together, they solve problems together, they laugh together, they cry together, we pick up pieces of different things that are going on that would be a by the way conversation that parents deal with and just forget that they're dealing with. They spin a web, of what I call a web of shame really, around vulnerable people and parents get stuck on that web and they get one foot off having got one thing sorted and they've got another hand stuck somewhere else, you know. That's what happens and that's a shame because it's wasting money. Now I know that because of what we do here. It's taken my whole life and the other trustees' whole lives but it's important. And what people are forgetting is that workforce of parent carers that are out there that will be willing to be part of something like this. When they see their voice and their expertise being used properly, 
and respectfully, they will absolutely become involved in, in, in developing local services that are going to meet their sons and daughters' needs once they're treated respectfully. So it really helps you so much. And um, so that's it, you know, it, it really makes the journey much, much easier. Pull of Life is a really, really valuable organisation and we'd be lost without it. We would, definitely. Yeah. There should be more. Should be more. They should get more funding. So they can, yeah. <laughs> Expand. <laughs>